What's up StarCraft fans, some of you may remember this list because a couple months ago Blizzard released a patch note with apparent hotfixes for StarCraft 2 co-op and when I tested them it turned out that a lot of them were not actually patched into the game. So with the release of the latest patch, the one before IEM Katowice 2023, I have once again tested several of the reported bug fixes to see if these have been properly patched in this time. Let's actually begin. So the way I'll navigate through this list this time is first I will sort through this list except I will filter out the untested ones because I don't know how to test those, the previously fixed and the fixed so that all the remaining ones are the ones which were not fixed in the previous patch Then I will have a look to see which ones of them have been fixed. Brian, go ahead and read the first one. Fixed an issue where gateways could automatically transform into warp gates after warp gate research completion, even if a unit was in production. Or this first one, what happened before was that when you had something in the gateway queued up, by the time warp gate research completed, that unit would, actually, would not actually complete, it would just stay in production, but the warp gate, or rather the gateway would instantly transform to warp gate. So how this fix is supposed to work is, when it finishes completing, the gateway will not automatically transform into a warp gate, but it will let wait for the sentinel to finish, or any Protoss unit to finish, before it will change into a uh, warp gate. So let's actually wait for this thing to pop out. And now it will automatically change. So that has been fixed. I made a separate column onto my uh, spreadsheet so I can track the ones that were not fixed before but will be fixed now. For example, this one is now fixed. So let's go the let's go read the next one, Brian. Units with the frenzied passive no longer get stunned with Stank's headbutt, Hunterling's leap attack and stun abilities from void shards and slivers. Okay, so for this next one, this Brutalisk which has the uh, the frenzied status over here in the corner should no longer be affected by stun. So you're gonna stand the stun, but it will not actually be stunned. You can see the Tosk Nests are affected, but the Brutalisk is not, so that is fixed. Okay, Brian, let's, let's read the next one. Hybrid Plasma Blast no longer can damage Nova though Stance Stance Invulnerability. Okay, through Stance Stance Invulnerability. Or this next one, how it should function is, when Nova switches to the Stealth Mode, it should activate the invulnerability, which will make the hybrid not attack it. So, you can actually see it. It worked. Let's show that again. Okay, focus on Nova here. She's in assault mode, and when she switches to stealth mode, that will activate the invulnerability, which will make her not take damage, and altogether cancel the hybrid Yamato. So she'll switch, and the hybrid will cancel the Yamato. So that is fixed. We have a three-parter for the next one. Brian, let's read it. Toxic nests can no longer be placed on top of swan flaming betties. Toxic nests can now properly be drag selected, or control plus click selected, or double click selected. Burrowed swarm hosts and unburrowed swarm hosts are no longer treated as different units when control clicked. Alright. Alright. Putting betties on top of toxic nests? No longer allowed. So, that bug has been fixed. Next one. Control clicking toxic nests, now allowed. Box selecting, also allowed. That's great. Okay, next one, swarm hosts. Click the depot, then control click. That does that does select all of them, but you can see in, there's still a different subgroup selection for bird and unburrowed swarm hosts. When I unburrow this, they're all the same. When I unburrow this, they become different subgroups, but the important thing is I can box lock them, which makes it fixed. Alright, we're in a roll so far. A lot of fixed ones, so the next two are both mutator related. Brian, let's read them. Structure overcharge can no longer target units with polarity even though it cannot damage them. Widow mines can no longer lock on and fire at units in polarity. Yeah, both of these are polarity related uh, bug fixes. For the next one, Polarity has been activated and we have Han and Horner and Alarak who are both bugged by Polarity. So you can see 
uh, for Alarak's point of view, he shot down all the Zerglings with Overcharge that are not polarized, but for the ones that are polarized, uh, Hara and Horner had to drop the, uh, the, the mag mines. So now we're going to test the Widow Mines to see if they are fixed. Alright, so they're going to start shooting. So you can see two Widow Mines triggered on non polarities but this Roach was polarized, so the Widow Mines are not shooting at it. Uh, and just to, uh, yeah. So you see, we see here an interesting thing. So the Widow Mines have been fixed, but it turns out that polarity, polarity units can still aggro mag mines. So yes, two fixes, but I think we discovered a new bug, which is a bit unfortunate. Oh well, fixes are fixes. All right, let's let's keep the streak going. Um, Brian, let's read the next one. Dark ship commandant unbound fanatics now properly spawn if orbital strikes are targeted on top of structures or sieged siege tanks. Nice. This next one has been a sore spot for many players. Let's drop the archon dudes right in the middle of the rocks. Still spawns. Woohoo! Looks like it has been fixed. Oh, this is awesome. That's officially been fixed for the Archon dudes. Okay, Brian. Next one. For the Haka. Fixed an issue with the range buff for devouring an air units with devouring one. An air units? My goodness. Anyway. Okay, for this next one, you can see the Ravasaurus range is... Well, well, let me unburrow that. Range is 7. So let me burrow it right here. Let me bait out one of these carriers, if I can bait it successfully. Okay, it turns out it, it can't be baited successfully. Oh, there it is. Okay, here's the carrier. Although, uh, I gotta have Devour off cooldown, and then get close enough. Eat the carrier, and then you can see range is now 7 plus 2, which means it is fixed. So far, everything we've looked at has been fixed, which bodes well. Brian, let's read the next one. Fixed an issue where Dacron and Tyrannosaurs could instantly get killed when double-edged was active. Alright, double-edged this time. For this next one, we have a Primal Worm, which will give us vision, I think. And then I'll use the Crun over here, and then see that the Crun himself basically took no damage from that. Like, yeah, the Crun basically took no damage from that so now we're gonna see whether the charge well it looks like maybe i'm wrong here it looks like the crun is completely immune to double-edged am i crazy because he does damage but he keeps you know not dying which is interesting yeah he just tanks everything now it looks like it's definitely fixed but, uh, hmm. Yeah, look, he basically took no damage from that charge. Oh, that's interesting. So it became broken in the other direction. Okay, it took maybe a little bit of damage. We'll, we'll, we'll test some more. Alright, a new wave dropped here. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of units. It's at 3390 health. This is going to ram these dudes. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely immune to double-edged now. Okay, it went broken in the other direction, which is fine by me. We have another double test up next. Brian, let's read. Fixed an issue where temporal field could make sentinels unable to die while reconstruction was available. Fixed an issue where temporal field could make Taras culturalisk unable to die while resurrection was available. So... Yeah, we're going to have Temporal Field this time, both for Karax and for Kerrigan, so let's do it. For this next one, Reconstruction has been researched for the Sentinels. The bug is that when a Zealot, when a Sentinel is stuck in a Temporal Field and he dies, he's not actually going to die. But now you can see it is still very much bugged. He still refuses to die as long as Reconstruction is available until the temporal field dissipates. For the next part, now we have a Torask. Who, well, a Torask survive upon death, so we're gonna whack this thing. See if this one will die while the temporal field lasts. No, the answer is also no, so 
both the uh, the revive bugs have both not been fixed. Both. Both, 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 both. Both. Okay, let's move on. Brian, let's read the next one. Fixed an issue where raptors or glings could be counted towards units made count when they leap. Or rather, when they attack. So for this next one, we are in this time as Kerrigan, and her zerglings will emerge. So what happens here is that uh, each of these zerglings, when they attack, will create another separate unit. So I only made six, no, uh, six in one building. So each time they engage the rock, they will leap. But the leap will create a new unit, which will show up in the score screen. So I'll just make this a few more times to really make that number jump out. Yeah, just really spam that attack. All right, that should be enough. Let's see the score screen to see if they counted toward the units made count. 114, yeah, there's no way I made a 114. Yes, that is still bugged. That is still very bugged. Hey, Brian, let's read the next one. Immobilization wave now properly deals expected 200 with 30 points into the augmented immobilization wave mastery. That's a big one for uh, Kerrigan mains out there. This next one is a pain point for, Mary Ke for many Kerrigan players because the immobilization wave with maximum points is supposed to be able to one-shot things like overseers. But it doesn't. They live with one health remaining when you have max mastery in immobilization wave. Um, so if this is fixed, this should kill these overseers and banshees in one hit. So let's see where uh, Bama Marketing will use his immobilization wave. There's one overseer here which has 200 full health and let's see, or there's another overseer here. And then Kerrigan will drop immobilization wave which kills both of these overlords and uh, well, yeah, does uh, 150 damage against the Void Rift. Alright, so that is now fixed. Kerrigan Immobilization Wave can now one-shot Banshees and stuff. We have another dual test up next. Brian, let's read it. Hyperion no longer attacks units in polarity. Volatile infested dropped by infested tanks on death no longer costs supply. Alright, it's gonna be the same test, almost different things. Okay, so we have another polarity bug. This time the Hyperion should only shoot the units with no polarity. So it's shooting. Wait, let me check. Is, is it still shooting? Well, the carrier is taking damage, so I guess it's not polarized. What's Oh, the pylon underneath is polarized. That's why. So the carrier is not polarized. That's why it's not taking damage. How about the stock underneath? Is this polarized? Neither of them are. The Archon is not polarized. Okay, so for uh, for Eviling, the only polarized things are, well, these buildings here. And, uh, well, this Interceptor. But everything else should be getting damaged. Okay, that looks to be the case. The, uh, the Cadence aren't... Yeah, the, this Cadence isn't polarized. Okay, everything that's not polarized is already dead. And the only ones remaining are polarized, but the print is not shooting at them, which means it has been fixed. Okay, we're at 31 supply. Siege tank died, it dropped down to 28 when the siege tank died, which means this bug has been fixed. As far as I know, maybe the bug, but maybe the bug works differently and I'm not, yeah. Alright, I'll mark it fixed. Brian, let us hear the next one. Mecha Hydralisk's juiced payload is now properly affected by attack upgrades. Alright, sounds good. This next one takes a little bit of reading. So, the Mecha Hydralisk of that boy has the Needle Spines. It's its basic attack which does 12 damage. And on top of that, when it's shooting air, it will also launch an Erudition missile which does 10 versus armored, 6 versus anything else, and it has 2 attacks. So, with other upgrades, it should deal 12 plus uh, 2 10 damages. So, 12 plus 20, 
that's 20 or rather uh, 32 damage okay that's why it received uh 32 damage okay 165 it took 35 damage 13 oh now it, it it just received an upgrade okay 13 uh plus 22 that's 35 oh oh that worked 44 because 11 by 2 by 2 is 44 and then add 13 that's 57 so this over dude starts out at 200 health less 57 uh that should be 143 yeah it works now 57 damage so that's uh yeah 20 yeah it did the the juiced up one let's get another upgrade see if it works okay it should deal 12 by 2 24 by 2 48 and 48 plus 14 that's 62 damage 48 and add 14 yeah 62 damage which means Okay, that worked properly. Alright. Okay, now that my Hydralisk has plus 3, it should do 13 by 4. That's 52. 52 add 15. That's 67 damage. So 67. It should have 1 33 health remaining when I shoot it once. There it is. I think it's fixed, guys. Brian, let's move on to the next one. Infested Diamondbacks are now properly affected by the Mech Attack Speed Mastery. Alright. Okay, I think... Yeah. The 0.77 attack speed of the Bile Cannons is increased for the man. That's why it glo it's glowing yellow. As compared to, well, anything else. 1.5. I think it works. Let me just do something. These duelings have... Yeah, the attack speed, weapon speed, look, it's it's white. That means it's not buffed. This is 0.77, which means I think it is buffed. I'll call it fixed, yeah? Uh, wait, let me do one more uh, test with the Apocalypse. Yeah, it's also, this one's also uh, uh, not, not buffed. I think it's fixed, guys. All right, I'll call that fixed. All right, Brian, let's hear the next one. Stukov can now properly root buildings in the fog of war. Cool. This one should be simple enough to test. Stukov with a barracks. And when we try to... Yeah, we just need vision of creep. Just need vision of creep. And then get in the fog of war. Make the barracks roots here. Should give us an indication. Yeah, look. Yeah, so we can now root buildings, Stukov's buildings, in the fog of war. That is fixed. Brian, let us hear the next one. Void shade units on side of Aemon now can be mind controlled by Dark Archons. Alright, let's test that. Okay, for this next one, I just have to make sure that I have enough energy to mind control. And then try to mind control some stuff in here. Nope. Nope. Cannot mind control this unit. Not fixed. Or rather, yeah, not fixed. All right, we're, uh, we're nearing the end. Brian, let's read the next one. Scourge nests now can be set rally points until construction is complete. Okay. I guess Scourge can now set rally points. Cool, let's test that one. All right, another simple one to test. You can see the bailing nest can set rally points even when under construction. So now the Scourge Nest now can also do the same. Yeah, so uh, the rally points work this way. Whenever something spawns out of this building, it will directly go to this point where it's rallied to. So you can see Scourge Nest. We'll wait for this to complete. And now it's almost done. Yeah, you can see it can still rally. So let's wait. You can see the bailings spawn directly to this spot. How about the Scourge? It's about to spawn. Let's see. Okay, Scourge also can be rallied. That is fixed. We're winding down now, down to our last few. Brian, let's hear the second to the last one. 
Void apparitions are no longer counted towards units made count. Yeah, the void apparitions are the little circle things that when you blink your uh, your embouchure, it will leave behind that little ball thing that will shoot at the enemy. So that's the void apparition. So here I did a replay. You can see uh, I played a Zerd tool and used produce 20. That was in the very first few minutes. And uh, well, actually, no, no, no. That was actually in the... Uh, yeah, that was a... I killed 235, so that's not lit, that's not early game at all. I made 20, and that's actually all embouchures, and they blicked them around, and it turns out that they didn't create extra units. So now, um, I believe that is fixed because I don't believe, uh, yeah, 20. Some of the work, some of them are workers, some of them are embouchures. So yeah, that looks fixed. All right, down to our last one, Brian. Let's read the last one. Moment of silence no longer pauses Protoss war pins while the debuff lasts. Alright, this last one, we just need to lure this hybrid in, and with moment of silence, um, we will see whether it will cancel out the war pins. So, bait it in here. Yeah, have it fight in here. And then warp in some guys as soon as it is close to dying. There we go. Warp in, and then... It does not cancel the warp in, so I believe that is fixed. And with that, I believe that is everyone. So let's do a recap. Out of that 24 that I tested today, only 4 were not fixed. That means 20 of these previous bugs are now fixed, which is pretty good. So guys, um, the title before of hotfix or not fix that is now um, no longer relevant these things are now mostly fixed and you should be able to enjoy them um, as co-op players while the 1v1 players uh, throw stuff at each other for balance stuff which we don't care about because this is co-op guys um, hope you enjoyed that thank you for watching if you have an idea for it also please leave that in the comment i will see you guys next time